afternoon to everyone. Now, very recently, I saw this shampoo launched by Mama Earth. Uh, it was called the Kerala Thali Shampoo, a generational hair care remedy. Now, with Nair as my surname, as I'm as Malayali as Malayali can get. So I went to my mother with this, and when she saw this, it was almost like all those uh, gharilu nuskes that she's tried and experimented with on my hair in my childhood has kind of got validation in the form of a bottle. My point here is that uh, no matter how cosmopolitan we become, there's always a very strong regional element that connects us. And if a marketer leverages that correctly, who knows, he may have a loyalist in you and me for life. And also gone are the days where uh, marketers had that one strategy for rural and urban combined. Because today, it's all about breathing Bharat. And to discuss that in the context of BFSI, I have some stellar panelists. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Sapna, let me start with you. Uh, now, there is heightened awareness uh, in, in the health insurance space and overall healthcare space after COVID. Uh, tell me for Manipal Signa, uh, what uh, have the purchases in rural areas or uh, urban areas increased significantly are, or are they on par today when it comes to Manipal Signa? Good afternoon. Right on to business we get. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, you know, good afternoon to everyone. Good, great to be here. I think a very interesting topic and a topic that I personally have been spending a lot of time with in the last uh, one year, definitely, and beyond. Uh, it has heightened uh, the focus on uh, Bharat and tier two, tier three uh, markets. And I think it's a, you know, as Nita, you rightly said, for a market tier, it's a great opportunity on how do you really play the strategies. Uh, and I think we'll talk about that more. But, you know, to talk about insurance specifically. So I lead marketing at Manipal Signa Health Insurance. Uh, you know, so we kind of uh, are a, a, a company which is focused uh, on that sector. And of course, I think in health insurance, we've seen difference post-COVID. All of us in this room suddenly also have, you know, a greater uh, feel for the product. Uh, you know, so in fact, pre-COVID, you know, you would have a lot of people trying to sell you the concept of health insurance. I think definitely post-COVID, the concept of health insurance sells itself. The what-if moment has happened and, you know, so we understand that sector. Um, I think in terms of growth, uh, you know, specifically in Neeta's uh, question, the health insurance sector has been growing at a rate of 18-20% overall, if I see, across general insurance, standard, I mean, the standalone health insurance and so on. However, you know, the, the rate of growth uh, in terms of new to health customers. So within metros, tier one, tier two, there's a lot of growth that's happening, but that's probably happening due to people shifting policies, you know, higher premiums and so on. And the markets which are beyond tier one, tier two, the, the newer markets, where the customer is getting the health policy for the first time. So, you know, the NOPs or the new to health customers that growth is definitely, you know, um, the momentum is very strong into the, in the smaller cities. Uh, I wouldn't say rural because uh, that's still, you know, so I think there is in health insurance, there is this top segment, there is the bottom, and then there's a missing middle. I think the missing middle is where the focus is. And the focus and growth that we are seeing, and I'm, I'm sure all companies are seeing as my, you know, other panelists also would uh, talk about it, is, um, you know, very strong and the opportunity is very huge uh, in, the, in the emerging markets. And also, uh, tell us a little about how you're approaching both the markets. Are you also spending a significant amount of your budget making ads in different languages to appeal to those people in pockets? Okay, so I think let's start with this question because we've been thinking about it. Is I think starting from the, you know, the, the, the two markets or Bharat and India, if I were to just say it, uh, in one uh, way, I think the messaging itself is at two uh, you know, spectrum. And having spent some time in this industry so far, like in health insurance, for example, and a lot of journalists, when you talk to people, you know, earlier the questions used to be, why do you need health insurance? Tell me about health insurance. In many of the metros, you know, and the evolved uh, segments, you're actually talking features. You're talking copay, you're talking restoration, you're talking, you know, room rent. So that whole shift has happened into tell me more about health insurance in certain markets. And, you know, and whereas in the other markets is still the basic generic, 
you know, health insurance zaruri hai, health ke saath health insurance zaruri hai. So those kind of messaging is there in the other markets. So we have actually tailor-made messaging. I don't think the messaging in metros works as a messaging that we need to do in uh, smaller cities and smaller towns. So we have quite, you know, differentiated our messaging. So starting from messaging, that's one. Because localization of content is one thing, but it's actually the content itself. So the content itself is, uh, you know, it's a different need or a different level of education uh, that's present uh, in the tier one markets vis-a-vis -vis tier two, tier three, and rural markets. So the content itself is different. Of course, the distribution is different in the languages. Uh, methods of distribution are also different. And I think the fourth and the most important thing I would say is the relevance of the content. Uh, you know, how relevant uh, are you kind of making it is, and how are you kind of connecting with the audiences. So those are different strategies that we are adopting. Relevant content, okay. Um, let me come to you, Ratan. Um, now, perhaps a decade ago, I think most marketers were happy calling tier one cities and you know urban cities their war zones and focused on them uh, a lot. Uh, obviously, we've changed from India to Bharat now. Uh, I want to understand from you, besides the regional divide, what other divide are you catering to when you market to a country as large and diverse as India? Okay, so let me just start, give a little bit of context. Uh, so I run marketing for SBI General Insurance. We are a subsidiary of SBI Bank. Uh, if I take SBI Bank, it has some 20,000 plus branches. Uh, it has some 80,000 plus banking correspondents. So if I were to put even one person in each of these places, because each of them you know, are profitable kind of catchment zones, I would need 20,000 people or 80,000 people or whatever, right? So one is that our mother brand has got a massive penetration, which we, after being in business for 15 years, have not been able to you know, fully kind of service the bank customers. Uh, however, uh, the way at SBI General Insurance or any other SBI subsidiary, we approach things is we try and imbibe the best of private sector and also the public sector. So our CEO is from the bank. Everybody else is from the private sector. And uh, uh, if I talk about how the products get distributed, we have a partnership with, let's say, HSBC. So you will have a very different segment of customers at HSBC. Then you have SBI Bank. Then you have IDFC Bank. Then you have FinTech customers with the phone pay, uh, you know, Policy Bazaar, and so on. Then you have regional rural banks. Uh, in places where you've never heard of, forget the banks itself. So I think that's the scale at which, you know, the opportunity exists. And as Sapna mentioned, the penetration levels in this category is very, very low. Right. Now, in terms of, I think, rather than think in terms of divide and so on, the way at least we look at it is in terms of what are the opportunities? And what does it take to kind of, you know, capture that opportunity? Right? Because let's say the competition intensity levels are different in metros versus larger towns. As again, Sapna mentioned, at, in smaller towns, you have to do more base education about, you know, why should you take insurance? What happens? You know, maybe you've taken insurance for 2,000 rupees or 3,000 rupees, but you didn't fall ill, so you didn't claim it. So you're like, you know, paisa to kuch nahi mila. So it is a very more basic level of kind of education at that level. But I think the main thing is one, compared to five, ten years ago, uh, you know, the Indians have become richer at a more deeper level. There was a far greater concentration of income and customers and consumers in top six, top ten, top twenty, top thirty metros. Uh, you know, mutual funds still call it. T30 and B30, everything else is below 30. But the fact is that with urbanization happening, with states setting up infrastructure projects, with rural rich emerging, uh, with you know small scale industries coming up in small places, the overall across sectors, consumers have kind of gone, right? So the opportunity exists everywhere. The second part is, I think, what is required is integrated marketing, not just communication or content. Because communication is one peg. 
you run a campaign, it will run at, you know, 60%, four reach, five reach. You'll have X spots which will run for, you know, two months, three months, you'll take IPL, not take IPL. All of those are one part, right? So, so communication is one part. Equally, the way we look at it in terms of integrated marketing is what can we do to empower our channels and get the person who's actually going and selling it, get that guy educated, right? Because that guy himself is a, somebody earning 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, you know, a month. And if you educate that guy and give him tools uh, via WhatsApp, via email, whatever, which he can kind of forward further, those actually are more valuable than, you know, branded communication as we kind of see. Uh, so I think, like I said, instead of the divide, the way we look at it, there are different segments. And for each segment, there is a certain cost of kind of awareness creation and servicing the customers. And how do we kind of tailor that? The last point I'd like to make is that uh, I think in most financial services products uh, and insurance definitely, they're all long range products, right? So you, the moment you buy is actually just the start of your journey. You, yeah, so you want that consumer to continue for the next 10, 15, whatever, you know, X number of years. And there are opportunities to communicate with this customer throughout the journey so that he renews, so that he's made aware of what features are there, so that at various points of time he can actually top up his policy because, you know, at the start of your career you take something for 2 lakhs and 3 lakhs and you'll forget about it. But 10, 15 years later, today in a best-in-class hospital, you know, the maternity cost will not be covered in 2 lakh rupees, right? So forget a major illness. So how do you kind of get that customer to add on more products, add on things like critical illnesses? So for us, like we said, why integrated marketing? You look at not just communication at level one, but how do we kind of keep communicating with that customer so that he renews with us, so that he's aware of what the features are, so that he's aware, you know, where's the nearest hospital and stuff like that. And we do that in, in English also and in a bunch of, I think we, we do all of this in some 14 odd languages. So that's a lot of back end work actually which, which happens. Well, let me try and get in an expert here, an agency expert. Uh, Pratik, let me come to you. You have an influencer marketing agency. And we've seen a lot of uh, rural and semi-rural influencers going to town and captivating the attention of a lot of uh, audiences. Um, but BFSI, like Ratan said, is not an easy uh, sector to market to or promote. Uh, when you work with BFSI brands, especially uh, on, in rural areas, what exactly is your strategy and how is it different from the rest of the categories? So, um, COVID was an event which actually thinned the line between uh, content which would stay in rural and content which would stay in urban areas. Uh, now, content moves from places to places. You would be surprised to see that in rural areas, Game of Thrones is probably dubbed in a Hindi language or Telugu language and people are watching it. So content is not just specific. Yes, however, the content which resonates with the rural areas would probably be slightly different from what resonates with us while we are sitting here. Uh, one of the things which works with rural influencers and semi-urban influencers is that they are trying to create content which is very, very specific to their audiences, specifically in their geographical areas. So, uh, someone who is probably making content in Durg, his content if dubbed in Telugu would probably be, be working in Akakinada as well. So, what, what, and, and what happens with specifically with uh, banking, especially insurance, insurance is a very personalized decision. You do not wake up in the morning and say, Aaj main insurance I health insurance I will I will actually talk to a few people and say, which is better? I mean, the advice they will give is, probably not going to be very sound advice. It will be based on their personal experiences. However, I will look at, I look at insurance or banking as a very personalized service. So what works for specifically for this sector is that the, the kind of influences they choose, the kind of content they create with them has to be very straightforward, honest, and to some extent as uh, Rohit mentioned uh, in the last panel that, you know, he likes watching uh, comedy influencers more than any type of influences. It has to be entertaining in some sort of fashion. 
but it has to be very very straightforward it cannot be complex it cannot be layered too much and if if it's honest content it will work it may not go viral it may not go crazy you might not get those thumbs up on whatsapp groups internally but at the end of the day it will help achieve the brand their primary goals of taking that particular communication piece which they wanted to at the beginning of the con creation of the content and the selection of the influencers it works at the end of the day you know i'd like to come to you next uh, shweta now a big advantage of demonetization has been that uh, has been the use of upi uh, even if you travel to the remotest of places i'm sure if you don't have enough change they'll uh, you know I, it has happened to me they've come with a qr code and say isko scan kar lo so uh, tell me you operate in this particular space and of course more what kind of communication or marketing has really worked for you uh so ring and kish i um, head marketing for both brands uh, we fall under the same parent company and uh, our brick and mortar business is uh, microfinance we offer consumer loans and upi also is available on the app but uh, uh, overall for the app not just uh, upi uh, we absolutely market to bharat uh, india is not one country uh india has many countries and we have to win in many indias um so uh of course creating vernacular uh, content is just one part of uh, the communication strategy but when it specifically comes to uh credit you know borrowing from a digital pla uh, platform the kind of sensibilities that exist in uh, urban india is very different from the sensibilities in a tier 2 tier 3 uh, town uh, given the kind of scams that uh, the fintech industry has seen uh, phishing wishing you know all of these uh, give me your otp and people you know every day in the news there is you know a certain kind of scam that's reported so overall when you look at uh, a metro the trust factor uh, on these platforms is a lot higher but when you go to heartland india uh, you know people are not that comfortable a there is a mental block against borrowing as such because indians are raised thinking uh, credit is bad and loan is bad and you know if you borrow then it means you are not uh, affluent and you know you must be really poor to take a loan there is a certain kind of mindset right indian parents especially uh, the previous generation borrowing or taking a loan was uh considered to be you know a sort of a weakness vis-a-vis -vis a country like us even where mortgage and student loans are fairly common you know people don't look down upon you so when you look at tier 2 tier 3 uh a there is a lot of uh you know mental block against borrowing two there is a mental block against trusting a digital platform uh for your loan so um and and given all these scams the trust factor is a little low and a data point i want to throw in here is just 10% of india communicates in english uh, right so uh, while we create vernacular content language is just one part of it uh, we also appeal to the sensibilities their mindset uh, and in tier 2 tier 3 we do a lot of uh, customer education where we uh, release a series of you know uh, communication on on various channels where we uh, talk about how the platform protects consumers how their data is protected how people need to safeguard themselves on an online platform saying hey we don't share your otp don't share your atm pin you know uh, beyond we also go beyond uh the prerogative of a fintech organization and overall tell them that don't share your passwords and you know don't uh, withdraw money from an atm when there is someone else and don't share your uh, pin so we invest a lot in appealing to the sensibilities of uh, a tier 2 tier 3 borrower over and above the vernacular customization that happens it's never a case where we just blindly translate uh 
right? Uh, one common misconception is that, hey, I make an English creative and then I translate it in 10 other languages, right? It's not something that can just get translated. The messaging itself has to be completely different to appeal to their state of mind, their sensibilities when it comes to borrowing from a platform. So yes, UPI is one, loan is another, but uh, it's not just vernacular content, it's also the kind of influencers that we choose, the kind of education, customer education that uh, we do, and also message that appeals to their sensibilities, which builds trust, you know, which kind of reassures them that, hey, you're safe, your money is safe. Uh, uh, you know, we talk about credit score, where we say, you know, how do you uh, maintain your credit score? How do you invest? How do you start saving? So we go beyond uh, just business communication. We talk about money in general where we say, hey, here's how you save, here's how you invest, which is very different from the way we talk to an urban borrower. Uh, uh, so yeah, those are the kind of uh, in-depth communication strategies that we follow at both Ring and Kisht. Interesting, so in, uh, in addition to uh, the marketing process as an additional layer, you have to make sure that they understand the product really well, uh, considering the different levels of financial literacy. Nice. So let, let me also uh, bring in uh, Satya here. Now, Shweta mm -hmm. spoke about how there is a change that she also has to bring about an attitude, you know, loan lena karab hai, and all of that. While she's dealing with that, another big problem is to actually reach out to the right people in these rural areas. And you do that beautifully at uh, ProManage, which is an extension of Sileka. Uh, now, businesses confront this unique combination of challenges, uh, demographic, social, and economic issues. Uh, and of course, high cost to serve figures when it comes to rural areas. Tell us how have you helped your brands uh, in the yeah. BFSI space to uh, overcome this? Uh, give us an example of how it's really worked. Thank you. So just to uh, set a context for this, uh, ProManage is a digital SaaS platform which helps uh, nationwide brands which have physical locations manage their digital representation of their physical locations across the country, uh, across multiple discovery platforms such as Google is one, Bing, Apple, Map My India, and all these things. So we have API integration to all these. So we help close to 60 plus brands and uh, close to a third of them are from the financial services. We manage more than uh, 70,000 locations uh, for these people. That's what we do. And um, while 90% of uh, actual transactions today in India, despite all the hangama about online purchase, 90% still happens offline, but near 100% of the searching for products and services and brands happens online. So the consumer goes through three phases of uh, one, they're searching, the second one, they're researching, and the third one is they actually end up in, actually in uh, purchasing. So search, research, and purchase. If I have one complaint against the marketing community is that they believe that everybody will f find out who they are and they will buy the product and service today. But oftentimes, the first two phases are where a lot of time is spent by consumers. First, they are looking for it, even though even for every one person who is looking for you by mentioning your brand, there are typically between uh, 5 to 30 X folks who are looking for the category without having any particular brand on their mind, right? So that is the sweetest audience you can get because these guys are ready to buy today. There is a purchase intent and the conversion is in orders of magnitude higher than the consumers who are not readily, not really looking for where you are. So the second part is also equally important in the sense that people uh, when they're looking for something, they not all of them, I would say about 90% of them are not ready to buy today because they're not sure what to buy. 
Second is they are not sure who to buy it from. So there is a significant amount of uh, time that is spent by these people. So what we do is that we help uh, in uh, ensuring that brands in the hyper-local locations across the country by locality and by city where people are looking, uh, there are 700 crore searches in India of people looking to buy something every month. 700 crore. This is an astonishingly large number. Right? So one thing we do is that we help consumers, uh, we help our clients find, uh, help consumers find our clients' locations where they are across multiple discovery platforms. People search for it on Google, people search for it on Bing, Apple Maps, Map My India, car dash locations, Ola, Uber, and variety of places people search for uh, products and services. And the second thing that we do is uh, helping, which is the question that you've asked is, uh, when people are researching, the more of their time that they have, which is not unlimited, in finding out what they want to buy, the more of that time a brand can occupy being helpful, not hustling in the sense of, here's an offer buy, right? But they have multiple questions to ask, whether it is insurance or a car loan, or something else, people have a variety of questions. Here is where the part comes in with India is very tricky, which is India is perhaps the only country in the world where outside of the top metros, if you go to even places like Vijayawada, you sit in a restaurant and you listen to what people are saying, they're speaking in Telugu. Nobody talks English, right? So in the research phase of it, you know, people want to ask questions and they tend to ask questions in their local language, right? And uh, they, they cannot follow a structure in asking, press one for this, press two for this. Third is they make mistakes in both in the written language and they also make mistakes in terms of framing the question. So there is multiple levels of complexity. Fortunately, there is a solution, which is in the near advent, you have this whole, uh, uh, AI that has come in that can divine the intent of the consumer, understand what the consumer is asking, tolerate error, comprehend multiple languages and to be able to respond to it in the language that uh, they are comfortable with. So uh, we have implemented this for actually Sterling Holidays is one. We are also implementing it for uh, multiple financial services clients where we are, pro we are providing comprehensive encyclopedic answers in a lucid, comprehensible manner in whatever language that they ask, in about 18 different languages that they ask. We're able to help them, first of all, understand the requirement and then answer any questions they may have and to be then able to provide, okay, this is what will fit your need. Right? So the search, research, purchase, there's a lot of time, about 80-90% of the time for a vast majority of the people is spent in these two phases. I think that's how brands can help them uh, select the brand to buy. Very interesting. And I'll also come to uh, Rathen. I think there's something that you touched upon. You know, by the virtue of having SBI in your brand name, you know, you are very well known across the country. You don't have to talk to people and tell them who you are. And of course, there's a lot of respect and uh, trust that comes with it. But having said that, is customer acquisition harder for you in rural areas or urban? Because even in rural areas, you're very well known, in fact, in fact, better known. Yeah, so like I said, SBI Bank currently, I think, serves over 50 crore people out of whatever, 145, 150 crore people. So, and we've been in business for the last, this is our 15th year. So, even if we are able to serve those 50 crore people, you know, that'll possibly make us the largest player in the business. Uh, and we have not managed to do that because, like I said, there are 22,000 branches of SBI. If you have to place one guy in each branch, that's 22,000 people. Right? Right. So... So that's, huh? It's humongous, plus there are 80,000 banking correspondents, right? So uh, it's huge. Uh, the, 
general insurance business is growing at approximately 13, 14% a year. You which, outpaced that, right? Yeah, which is again massive. So this is a three and a half lakh crore category. Let me restate that. It's a three and a half lakh crore category growing at 13 to 14%. That is huge. Health insurance is a one lakh crore category within that, growing at 18%. So every year, there are 18,000 crore of business available. So I think in this category and business per se, per se there is massive opportunity. Right? Uh, the median age of Indians of India is around 28, 29. Right? So when do people start looking at health insurance? When do people start taking cars from two wheelers and so on? Just about when they get married, have kids. So that asset acquisition phase is 30 onwards, right? All that is prime for actually insurance, right? So even if you take the next 10, 15 years, there is massive opportunity. So I think this is one of the categories where demand per se is not the problem. We are growing at this, this year roughly twice the pace of the market and we are 12,000 crores, so that's a large size. Uh, so I think demand, like I said, is not the, the main challenge. Uh, in any case, these are long range products. So I think the main thing is how do you get the consumer and handhold the consumer over a 10, 15 year journey so that you are able to actually, you know, uh, add on other features of the product or migrate him onto a different product as his life stage changes. As he grows older, you need to add critical illness, uh, the level of hospitals that you know, he would uh, you know, want to go to will change as he becomes older and more prosperous and so on. So what is traditionally called cross-sell, upsell, there are massive opportunities in all of this which all have to be data-based. Uh, within that, of course, uh, you know, the competitive intensity is obviously higher in larger metros uh, versus smaller markets, right? But I think there are two, three things which are important in this category, like in any other category. One part broadly I call is the softer thing, right? So in this category, trust is very important. If I'm taking a product when I'm 30 years old and I'm going to maybe go to a hospital and use it when I'm 55 years old or 60 years old, I have to broadly be aware that, you know, this company is going to last 30 years, right? Uh, so that is a very, very big factor. Then you come to harder factors, right? What is the network of hospitals which are covered? What's the claim settlement ratio? Are you able to do this over a phone call or over an app uh, and do it multi-channel because consumers are multi-channel. So our goal, like I said, is to look at it in terms of integrated marketing and see you know, what we can do for various segments of the customer to you know, fulfill that need. Uh, at the stage for a digital customer, you know, I just want to upfront put down you know, that these are the, this is the price point, these are the key features of the product without going into too much detail because I'm assuming he would have done his you know, research uh, and search prior to that. For somebody who's being sold to by an agent, uh, or by a, you know, like a uh, rural banking uh, uh, network person. I need to first educate the, the person who's actually going to be selling the product because what he knows is what he will communicate. Uh, and there again, things like WhatsApp communication and, you know, GIFs and s short films and then content and, and so on, make it easier for the transmission loss to get reduced. So. That's the but it's, it's rural. Is rural easy for you or is urban easy for you? <laughs> you know? In India, one thing is there, I'm sure all of us are marketers, nothing is easy. Because the moment anything is easy, there are 10 other players who will land up, right? I don't know, how many uh, in general insurance companies are there? 30? So there are more than 30 companies, right? So a person technically has a choice of over 30 companies in something as you know, uh, something like general insurance. So in India, nothing is easy. That is one thing I think all of us are very, very, you know, anybody who's spent time in marketing, 
you know, is, is they're very, very clear, right? Because the moment somebody finds it easy, some other guy says, bhai, ye kar raha hai, nahi kar sakta. You look at categories like paints and all this going off track. Look at the number of companies which have come up in the last two, three years in paints, right? Everybody's selling paints, everybody's making pipes. Today, everyone can produce anything. They have a brand which is kind of well-known. Uh, distribution channels are accessible. So, easy no, to question. Because if you're yeah. talking about competitive edge, let's try and understand how, how are you using innovation to appeal to that customer so that they only come to you. You know, we, we've often heard about, you know, translating in different ads in different languages, of course, to have that little bit of extra, you know, yeah. connect. Uh, and sometimes you also go one step further, you know, get a regional brand ambassador on board. So let's try and understand how SBI is using innovation, going besides, yeah. beyond this. So it's like this, right? Uh, so let me actually, uh, you know, be upfront and honest about this. When the going is good, what is important, more important than innovation is actually simplicity and consistency. Like, so if you, if anybody's played cricket, if the pitch is easy, there's no point trying to do a reverse sweep and do other stuff, right? The idea is to s ensure that you stay long and you hit, keep hitting the right shots. So, you know, I think, like I said, because the market is underpenetrated, the insurance penetration is whatever, sub 10%. The market is growing at 14%. Mm -hmm. You know, why? So you have to innovate, uh, but any innovation will get copied in the, by the next 30 guys in the next three months. You know, so rather than spend time, you know, wondering about innovation, the way to look at it is what is your business objective? What is your distribution might which you can leverage? Where do you stand versus the consumer? What are the triggers? What are the barriers? Which segment of consumers respond to what kind of communication? What language? What type of content? What method of delivery? Uh, and ensure that, you know, the basics happen. So, you know, in the last one, two years, we have now, uh, even once you become a consumer, there are 14 languages uh, in which you can do everything from register claims to, you know, get your payment process to get your policy documents. So, the, is this innovation? I would say maybe it is. It is below the, you know, surface. Nobody really talks about it. But somebody is getting in Nuria, somebody is getting in Assamese, somebody is getting it in, you know, uh, in Telugu or whatever. Catering to their comforts. So, you are catering to what that guy wants. Because anyway, that guy doesn't know anything. Right, so the main thing is to, you know, like I said, if the pitch is good, just be there for long and, you know, just okay. hit the right balls, yeah. Shweta, do you agree? For a younger brand, is that, does that hold true? Um, in terms of innovation, I think uh, innovation doesn't matter to the customer, right? Uh, innovation matters to marketers. Innovation maybe on some level matters to the organization, right? Uh, has this, is this, you know, been done for the first ever time? Have we won marketing awards? None of these things matter to the customer. So like uh, uh, Ratin uh, rightly said, um, simple communication, does the customer respond to this communication? Does it appeal to his sensibilities? And am I giving all the information at the right place and the right time? I think that's what uh, matters, right? If, if any brand does something, even if it's being done for the first time, um, I think, uh, you know, people will play catch up. So as long as the customer is at the heart of everything we do, I know this is a cliche, right? But then innovation, like I said, unless it's a product innovation, unless it's a, you know, a, a feature on the app, unless it is a, a technological advantage, unless it reduces uh, the loan disbursal time, right? That kind of innovation matters to the customer. But when it comes to communication, messaging, uh, innovation on those fronts uh, probably doesn't matter, right? Um, and one thing we strongly believe uh, at Ring and Kisht is uh, complete 
synergies between product, customer service, and marketing. Uh, marketing does not function in a silo, and it shouldn't, right? So innovation in terms of um, customer service time, uh, uh, responding to a customer in a certain way, being able to identify tone, being able to identify sentiment, uh, reducing the time that uh, a person can take to avail a loan. You know, some of those things matter a lot more uh, uh, to the customer and that is no different from uh, marketing, right? Anything that goes to market, anything that affects my GTM uh, going to market, uh, we focus on that holistically um, and if it makes a direct consumer impact, then that takes precedence over anything else. Uh, monies go on that front. Uh, if we have to cut down on a few influencers, so be it, right? Uh, because, uh, uh, I mean, wrong thing to say in front of Prateek, but, uh, you know, that's the lay of the land. So uh, anything that has a direct customer impact, then that kind of innovation matters a lot more than anything else. Very interesting, and you know, and because we are talking to Pratik. Uh, very recently, government had uh, and SEBI had imposed stricter rules on uh, fin uh, financial influencers. Uh, on one hand, they were obviously simplifying finance for Gen Z and millennials, and on the other hand, they were deceiving investors to some extent. So, what should be the checklist for brands when they are bringing on board a fin financial influencer? You know, from let's talk about the three brands that we have today. Yeah, so I think it was a good decision by SEBI because financial influencers would say something and would do something else. There's a very popular guy, I'm not going to name him. He came and made a video about the fact that you should never buy a house in India and ended up buying a million dollar house, 10 crore house. I think a lot of people know his name here, but... Uh, so, and uh, then there was this one individual who was asked, he was based out of uh, Chennai, he was asked to... Um, uh, the SEBI asked him to refund a certain amount of money back to the investors because he was giving dubious information. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant and I don't follow them, most of them. Uh, there's an entertaining way of talking about finance. So what happens is that to some, to people who are from the non-financial background, uh, finance tends to be boring. And as Ratin mentioned, people start to start to think about finance at the age of 27, 28. They start taking those important decisions much later in life. Oh, I, beyond a savings account and beyond a credit card, do I need to invest in an SIP? Do I need to invest in a certain other things, etc.? Now my income is more, what do I need to do beyond spending? So how do I do that? So financial influencers did play an important role in that. There have been some very, there have been some fabulous influencers uh, who have done a great job of educating people. Rachna Ranade is for an example. She started way, way before anybody did on YouTube and she did a fabulous job of in, uh, you know, talking about it. What brands need to do is, as she said, we want to cut down, we may cut down on influencers. You need to cut down on influencers who are not in sharing the same ethos as your brand. For instance, one of the biggest, one of the, uh, one of the, um, you know, I would not say it's a, a, a red, red ink mark when you should look at an influencer is probably somebody who's talking about a betting site somewhere in their profile, or somebody who's just randomly doing fashion one day. You're not serious about talking, you're not serious about the content which you've picked up, you're just doing it for the sake of money. So tomorrow you're going to associate yourself with any other brand which is trying to sell any other thing. We have known about in the past where there have been these loan companies who have dubiously, you know, um, called up people, gave them loan at very high interest rates, and financial influencers have supported these uh, these companies. So the brand should look at their own ethos. They should look at what they are trying to communicate. Look at the influencers. Do a thorough check on them. In fact, look at their educational background. That's the most important thing. And I think SEBI and IRDA are doing a good job in letting people know that these are the kind of influencers you should you should go ahead. I think there is a limit of 1 lakh followers for mutual funds. You, if you have more than 1 lakh followers, you can't promote mutual funds. If you have more than 1 million followers on, your, uh, on any of your social media platforms, you can't promote a broker. So they have started to uh, put those restrictions. So I think brands should look at those restrictions and follow those things. Thanks. So, uh, I'm speaking out of turn, but I have a small point to make. Uh, Sometimes, given all of these restrictions, you don't need a influencer to sell a financial product. Uh, you could do with a whole bunch of lifestyle influencers, travel influencers, beauty influencers, fashion influencers, fitness influencers, where they're selling a lifestyle, saying, hey, if I want 
you know, to get this fit and I need to buy this protein powder, then I need this much money. Mm -hmm. There are ways, you know, to integrate your financial messaging through slice of life influencers. So you don't necessarily need influencers to sell a financial product. And as she mentioned before, uh, a loan is needed by everyone and anyone. It's not a taboo. It should not be a taboo. So whoever the follower base is, it requires a loan at some point of time in their lives. So the same way they require insurance. Sapna, do you work with a lot of influencers? You know, actually, uh, on both the topics, uh, we work with a lot of, we have done Rachna Ranade, we have worked with Ankur Variku, we have done the whole works. But interestingly, we have done a lot of non-fintech influencers also. We had a campaign which was, you know, which is talking about expert ki suno sai chuno, which we had Manoj Bajpai as an ambassador. And to leverage that, we actually took experts in all fields. So we took a beauty expert, we took a lifestyle expert, we took a health expert and got the whole product and the messaging integrated into their uh, lifestyle. So I completely agree. I think influencers, in fact, there's a study that says, especially in tier two, tier three context, that people trust uh, people that they know. So I think that's a role that influencers end up playing. And you need to kind of be able to identify the right segment and the messaging fit. So, you know, so how do you use the influencer? How do you relay back the message? And once you have that, I think you keep, I mean, I don't think because of all the, you have to keep, um, you know, checking how it's working out for you. You know, so, you know, one influencer might one work in one quarter, same, you know, influencer, the kind of content that the person is doing suddenly changes. So a lot of monitoring is required uh, in this uh, whole process. So I think that's my take. I don't know, I see a short of time, but I wanted to weigh in on one more point if, uh, on that whole innovation bit, you know, very interesting uh, topic that happened in the middle. But I think, like, you know, we, for newer brands, so Manipal Signa is a relatively newer brand compared to an SBI, so we don't have that distribution uh, might, uh, so to say. Uh, so I think there, especially in, uh, you know, tier two, tier three, I mean, innovation, and I agree, innovation is not just marketing innovation. Is product, communication, service, is largely the proposition. So I think that's extremely important for us to break clutter uh, in terms of how do you, what product do you take forward and how do you communicate. So while, you know, I agree to a point on, you know, being, uh, you know, you have the market and you can take on, but for newer brands, I think you need to be constantly trying to say what's the next best idea, what's the next best thought that you can take to the market, what's the next best medium. And uh, that idea could come from anywhere. So in fact, we actually won the, you know, the FIKI Best Innovation Award from insurance. And that innovation award is not just, I mean, marketing and marketing as very rightly. It's, a, it's, a, it's like taking the proposition to the consumer. Uh, so I think for BFSI, there's a lot of opportunity to innovate. I think that's the one message, uh, you know, how do we do this in a more interesting, relevant, uh, smarter way, and also that reduces cost of acquisition. So the more innovative you are, the more, uh, you know, your um, uh, costs are better, your profitability are better. Yeah. Super, because we are low on time, I'll just ask one more question to all of you. Uh, digital obviously has become the go-to platform for all kinds of advertising. But when it comes to BFSI, is that the right tool? Because uh, of course we're seeing short form videos on the rise, WhatsApp messaging, all of that is happening. But unlike an FMCG market, we're talking marketing, uh, every product that you buy, it's a life decision. And uh, you know, there's a lot of learning involved before you actually hit purchase button there. So uh, do you think this is the right platform and to what extent should a brand spend on digital to get your message across or maybe one-sided message across to the people? Um, let's start with you. So I think uh, whether people are finally buy on the digital platforms, they are searching slash researching on digital, right? So you need to have very, very simple product communication and content there. Uh, you know, so that is a must. Uh, digital, depending on the category, depending on subcategories, the digital purchase could be 5%, 10%, 15%, mutual funds and all, it could have been, you know, be much larger. Uh, so that would kind of vary. There are products like health insurance and all which are 
fairly complex. So it actually makes sense to listen to some guy and figure out exactly what you're buying rather than try and you know, do a DIY because you will not be aware of so many things. Right? So uh, digital is super important. I would say, I would just add one more part which I've been stressing all along is one is the, you know, the, the audience at large. The second is your own customer base because they are, so we in fact measure NPS very, very rigorously across six of our businesses and track how we are, you know, kind of faring on each of the sub parameters. And this is all below the hood and we use it to tweak response time at call centers, we tweak it, use it to tweak messaging, communication and so on. So, so the customer himself is a person that, you know, somebody else will refer to. So I think as marketers, we need to spend a lot of effort in terms of communicating to them and making them influencers or ambassadors or whatever you kind of, kind of call them. Uh, yeah. Satya, would you like to talk about So, um, as, as uh, you, you, you have pointed out, there is a, most of the exploration today is happening online. And uh, especially for financial services, what we've seen is that it's not like you're buying a shirt or a, or a shoe or something where it is an impulse driven buy, but financial services is a considered purchase where people want to understand, they have questions to ask and they want these questions to be answered in a helpful manner. And it is almost impossible for any brand to put thousands of people ready to answer on the line and uh, who, are, who understand various aspects of the products that they sell and they can speak in the local language and uh, sustain the same enthusiasm at 5 p.m. as they have it at 9 a.m. in the morning. So for this, innovation is imperative that we have to provide this to them. Mm -hmm. And the second aspect is out of 100 people who come looking, uh, engaging with you, for most financial services over a three-month period, only about 15% convert, maximum if you're lucky. So there's also an opportunity in cultivating the other 85% mm -hmm. which may convert over time instead of ignoring them or thinking they're not of value. Pratik. So we just want to understand uh, what mediums uh, are the most essential. Is digital the go-to platform for marketing financial services? I think somewhere uh, financial services and even uh, insurance services are doing a fabulous job educating their customers. I think OTP was mentioned some time back, uh, you know, they have this, this constantly talking about that you should never share your OTP, you should never share your password or, uh, you know, insurance companies never ask you for personal details beyond certain things. I think they're doing a great job in that one-way communication whereby, you know, um, the short content which they're creating around it saying that they are trying to protect their consumers, they're trying to protect their customers, also telling that, that we care about certain things. It may be your fault, but we are trying to tell you that you shouldn't do this. So I think um, there, uh, it's, it's amazing how the contract, like, in fact, there was this recent, um, during the Olympics, the RBI went on, on this amazing ad campaign educating, um, you know, customers that these are the things you should not do and it was done in very innovative ways. It was done digitally also as well as on TV. So I think digitally that, that one particular aspect I think this sector is doing very nicely. Shweta talking about frauds and all of that is digital the ideal platform? It is uh, and for us it's pretty straightforward because it is a digital product. So yes digital is absolutely the right channel for us. Uh, we also do a lot of offline marketing. Uh, we also, uh, we have a merchant network. So uh, there is a lot of uh, offline branding that goes in the merchant network. There is a lot of training and communication that goes to our DSA network who also sell uh, the loans, who also propagate the loans on field. But our primary channel is digital and that's the way India is going. Uh, smartphone penetration is high, 5G penetration is high. Uh, we are the second largest users of WhatsApp, second largest user of social media um, in the world. So given all of these factors, given that uh, younger people are borrowing more and more, 80% um, uh, of our uh, channel mix is skewed towards digital platforms. And I started with you, Sapna, I want to end with you. Do you have these uh, collaborations with government bodies or local communities to kind of create that awareness besides? what happens on digital. Okay, thanks for that 
<laughs> Neeta. Uh, so on digital, I think definitely very important. Um, everybody has a mobile phone everywhere. So I think it's very important uh, from that perspective, 100%. But this, at the same time, you can't neglect the Anupamas of the world. You know, that television still exists. Uh, print also surprisingly is very strong uh, in Bharat and tier two, tier three. So those mediums are also, you know, quite effective. Digital is there, but um, so is um, television actually, and so is print. Uh, so we have a lot of choices. Um, and on the second thing, on the NGOs and the, so we have, I mean, I have personal experience because we have a, uh, you know, all insurers, I'm sure, uh, we are allocated a state where we are supposed to do a state insurance. Um, we are the official health insurance partner for that state. So Karnataka is one such state that we kind of work uh, very closely with along with Manipal hospitals. And there we actually tie up with a lot of, uh, you know, bodies at the Gram Panchayat level. So Gram Panchayats, NGOs, uh, again on healthcare education, health insurance education, financial literacy, and you know a lot of bodies and that whole ma machinery operates in a very different fashion than what we see sitting uh, in these uh, rooms. Uh, so uh, you know it's very and I would suggest I mean I, we've had a lot of good experience of roping in these partners uh, because again I think as a lot of my colleagues also said the most important thing is trust and there these this is the mediums of trust in many of these markets the local communities the panchayat uh, you know, people present there, the local CSC officer, you know, so that's the level of where the, where the trust lies and collaborating with them kind of gives you a pivot for your business and brand. Time is up and uh, you just heard. Thank you so much. <laughs> you just have heard how our panelists are breathing Bharat. Thank you so much for that insightful talk.